Hey guys, welcome to the channel if you're new. Welcome back if you're a subscriber. Special thanks to all of my patrons. My name's Neil and it's time for the next episode of The Haunting of Bly Manor. I'm in a weird headspace right now. I was supposed to be starting these reactions about three hours ago, but today's the day Canada just clinched a spot in the World Cup of soccer football for all of you Europeans. Um, for the only the second time ever, the first time in 36 years, we're going to the World Cup. We just beat Jamaica to clinch our spot. I'm sort of riding on that high, and oh yeah, I have to react to some Mike Flanagan horror now. So yeah, I'm I'm in a weird headspace, but I'm feeling awesome. I hope you guys are too. I hope you're having an excellent day. I hope that uh, this finds you in a good spot, and. I'm really thrilled that you came to Neil Talks today to spend a little bit of your precious time and enjoy some television with me. Tons of new information in this last couple episodes. We, we, we've learned A, that Peter and Rebecca are borrowing the children's bodies, basically. And now it's sort of elevated to the next level. and. Peter has been invited in to Miles, and Miles is gone. It's too late for him. But Rebecca chose not to do the same thing to Flora, and they, along with Danny, are kind of fighting back against Peter now. I don't know where this is going to go. I'm worried that it's going to have tragic endings, but I'm cautiously optimistic because Mike Flanagan put a happy ending on Hill House, so maybe there's going to be a happy ending here on Bly Manor too. But uh, yeah, I'm very curious to just jump right into it, so let's do that guys. This is episode 8, and it's called The Romance of Certain Old Clothes. Oh. Oh, uh, it's petrifying. Such a creepy look. Such a creepy look. Oh. Toward the middle of the 17th century, two daughters, born at an interval of five years apart. The elder, Viola. The younger, Perdita. With their father in the ground, they faced a dire necessity for marriage. Two sisters were at this time in all the freshness of their youthful bloom. Perdita in her sweetness, Viola in her wit, and Viola, of course, in the finest of dresses, always. Viola knew them for what they were, gluttons, opportunists, vultures. No, Bly must stay in the family, and the sisters must stay in control. I like how this is strictly a narration. We're not getting... No historical dialogue. One Mr. Arthur Lloyd. The Lloyds. We know Viola marries Lloyd. She's the grave rubbing that Flora did. Viola had made certain to be absent when he arrived. And just as Perdita began to feel the stirrings of a true interest in the young man, he may marry her. Oh, marry her sister, but there should be no mistake in the true authority of Bly Manor. Nor the way things will be done. Hmm. To love, cherish, till death us depart. And obey. To love, cherish, and obey. <laughs> so which one of these two becomes the lady in the lake? She's the one in white wandering the halls. She would sleep. She would wake, seized by a restlessness new to her heart. She would walk. Fly belongs to you, and they will try to take it from you as they did me. But I will not let them. It is you. It is me. It is us. But nothing holds, and all things change given time. Change does not often announce itself. Mm. By the time one realizes it has arrived, it has already set its teeth. <laughs> oh, fun. 
we're, we're going plague here. The plague was the 1660s, wasn't it? It is not the plague. Okay. Oh, thank God. She has the lung. Months at the most. And I would keep her separate. Was it like pneumonia? The rest of you. Consumption? Uh, cure her. I do not know that I can. You will. Yeah, Perdita's going to make a move here, or succumb. Oh, leeches. They're fun. They actually get used. Say the words after me. I go and prepare a place for you. No. Oh. What did you say? I do not go. I stay here. Just tell your god that I... Do not go. <laughs> it is your soul I worry for. No. Perdita, to know. You tell them, sister. God oh. should know better. She is as he made her. If she says she will not go, she will not. And then... Isabel? She... Five times round this one. She didn't die. Let's show the young thing how it's done proper. <laughs> wow. Are we staying in this timeline for the entire episode? Yep, I think we know who turns into Lady in the Lake. I don't need you to take that on. That or anything else. I would never. My rings and my lace and my silk. They will be a great inheritance for our daughter. Promise me that you will keep them for her, that you will keep the key, and you will never give it to anyone except our child. That night, as Perdita beheld her sister, a thought occurred to her. The word had eclipsed her thoughts at night, uh -oh. waking as well. A whisper in her ear, Mercy? in her mind entire. And now the word crept down her shoulder and her elbow. Until the word yeah. came to live in her hand. The word was mercy. And the word was a lie. No, the word had always been enough. Hmm. Well. Wow. Arthur bore his bereavement soberly and manfully. We've we've seen this chest before up in the attic. They were married, as was becoming, with great privacy. Almost with secrecy. But Perdita's desires, as you will have observed, remained a good deal of a mystery. Oh. Yeah. That was something creepy going on with that painting. On the sixth anniversary of Viola's death, Perdita had reached her limit. Enough. Our financials are a disaster. We have the solution above our heads. It's enough to right the ship. No. She would want us to. It is for Isabel. The manor is for Isabel. Okay, well, clearly she'll find the keys and go open the chest. And very interesting that this whole episode's black and white so far. When it started, I felt like this was just going to be a, a short intro to the episode, but if now I'm beginning to feel like we're here for the duration, which is an, a very interesting choice. Whew. That was not the angle of attack I was expecting. I'm just gonna find her dead in the attic? Yeah. Oh. Oh. She woke up in those clothes. Her spirit did, her ghost did, her. Is she, quote, in the trunk? 
waiting to be unlocked. Yeah. Let's go look at ourselves in the mirror now. She's not sick anymore. I'm guessing her eyes aren't going to... She would sleep. She would wake. She would walk. She would walk. <gasps> oh, it's covering the mirrors just like Danny. Seeing it, her own ghosts. She would wake. Seeing the truth. She would walk. Oh. And time went by, sleeping, waking, walking. walking. And in time, as we all do, she admitted all. She admitted she was dead. No eyes in this reflection. Was a dream. And one day, Isabel would open her mother's trunk and claim her reward. The moment finally came. And it's not Isabel, <laughs> it's Perdita. <laughs> they would move away from here, sell the manor, and find a quieter life. At last, at least, she'd be with them both. Her husband. Her They're daughter. taking the truck with no her. No matter yeah. if they couldn't see her. His superstition defied reason, but he felt confident all the same. Oh. Oh. With every ounce of her considerable will, Viola would not go. The pull of that next world ignored, she instead made her own gravity. Gravity of will. And once again, she would sleep. And wake and walk. She would wake. And she would walk. That perhaps the nightmare would abate. You mustn't be in this wing without protection. And as the plague doctor died, so he was immediately forgotten. Her gravity, it seemed, her kept him in the house too. Others too. He's one of the dolls in Flora's dollhouse, I think. And with the forgetting, an she ailment would wake. altogether monstrous. All things fade. Tis the way of the world. A past This is her eyes sealing fade. shut. And so true does the spirit. Her name forgotten. Her sister's name forgotten. As her memories left her, so too her face. And here was her child. It must be the child whom she'd sought. Mm. Those souls held in all. That was a little girl that, or boy that was. Those unfortunates oh. trapped in the gravity well she had made of Bly Manor. We saw the plague doctor in the hall early on, didn't we? A fate that befell Viola's once sister, now forgotten in the attic, unaware that she'd ever had a sister at all, to murder or be murdered by. A fate that befell anyone unfortunate enough to step into her habitual path. Stop. Stop! No hope for anyone with a sad misfortune to die on the grounds of Bly. No hope for the victims of Bly, be they victims of fate or vice. That's all we get. Uh, it was a very different episode and it wasn't what I was expecting. I don't know whether you guys agree or not. But I'm going to put this out there right now as of everything I've seen of Mike Flanagan so far, this is my least favorite episode. And I don't think it's because it's an unexpected departure from the plot. I think it had potential in giving us Viola and Perdita's story, but I think my problem is, is it explained it so thoroughly. Clearly there, there's a story to be told, but the fact that we devoted, I don't know how many, how many minutes that episode was, we just devoted an entire episode to telling that story and, and maybe it didn't need quite so much screen time. Maybe it needed 
15 or 20 minutes, maybe there would, would have been a way to intersperse that story with what was happening in the moment in 1987. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there was just a different way to structure it, but it felt like there was too much of the story. Like when I can predict every, not just story beats, but lines and, and the rhythms become overly repetitive, then it's a fine line between that and boring and predictable and uninteresting. That's the, the worst of it is you, you could see that by the time Viola was getting sick, it was quite likely she was becoming the lady in the lake. And maybe you didn't need to spell it all out quite so much. That being said, this is television. And I know, I guarantee you, if I was working on a TV show and this script came along, we'd all be sweating things. In some ways, it's quite manageable, but like, I, like props to the costume department, for instance, you know, like they may have been given some heads up that this episode was coming, but having to get to the point where like you, you don't get a, a schedule for an episode during television more than about 10 days in advance. And, you know, maybe you get the script a week before that, you know, so you don't even know how many um, characters there are, how many costumes will be need to, needed to pro be provided. And in an episode where clothing does so much to describe the time, but also is, is central to the plot, um, that, that, that's a that's a heavy important workload I think we knew Vi Viola Lloyd was important the first time we saw Arthur's gravestone and her her stone in the the little chapel I like the explanation of the the other ghosts being captured at Bly by this sort of gravity well that she created by her own stubbornness being unwilling to leave that she's trapped there by the trunk being thrown into the lake because Arthur was so um, suspicious but why was Arthur buried there if he sold the place and left anyway I don't know um it, it's always weird when you depart the main storyline and finish the episode right where you finished the previous episode, which is what happened here. You know, we, we, we've, we've seen, now we'll call her Viola, grabbing Danny by the throat at the end of last episode, at the start of this episode, and at the end of this episode. And we're probably going to start next episode with it too. So it's like this momentous moment but we're just not progressing that plot at all, and that's a little frustrating. But I'm, in a sense, I'm, it makes more sense to me that that is the kickoff of the, f the finale of the final episode, because clearly things have been brought to a head, but I don't know how we're, we're getting through this. Yeah, I just don't, I don't know. But I am really looking forward to finding out. I am really looking forward to finding out. I always feel a little weird when an episode underwhelms me here on the channel because I've been very lucky that you guys have steered me towards some really excellent programs and there, there have been very few um, less than amazing episodes that I've had that I've gotten to watch here on the episode but it's on, on the channel but it's going to happen of course it's going to happen not all television is five star and and even shows which are highly rated will have the odd episode that's off and you know all things considered there's nothing wrong with this episode i just don't think it quite measures up to some of the truly spectacular stuff we've had from Mike Flanagan in this series and in Hill House. And I think part of that, I, you know, so much of this episode was narrated, 
which um, lends a very different tone. It, you, you're you're removed from the story a lot more when there's narration. You become a, a reader, an observer, as opposed to a participant in the story. So that, that immediately creates a, a level of separation that isn't otherwise there, which isn't to say narration is always a bad thing, but you have to use it very wisely. Yeah, you know, sometimes things that scripts that look great on paper just for whatever reason don't quite fully turn out the way everyone expects even if everyone puts in their their best performance the crew's bringing all their energy to to the set to the production sometimes things just don't quite work you know i i've, I've worked on things that when we were shooting them, everyone thought this is going to be a hit. It's going to be amazing. And it just turned out not to be. And I've worked on other stuff that when you first read the script, you're like, this is nothing special. And it turns into something really special. When like there's just something magic on set that happens sometimes. And sometimes, unfortunately, the opposite is true too. Anyway, um, let's not harp on it. It's still an amazing series. I'm still really excited to see how it concludes. I'm really hoping Danny gets out of this alive, but it's sure not looking promising right now. Yeah. Until next week, everybody. Take care. Stay healthy. And we'll see you soon. Cheers.